of the agenda. We do have an addition 3.02 presentation discovery from Mr. Sammons, who should be here in just a moment. Can I have a motion? I move to approve the agenda as amended. I second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes. Do we have any public input for items on the agenda tonight? Any public input for items on the agenda? Oh. <laughs> Where are you at? All right, no public input. Uh, next, our consent agenda. Board meeting minutes of October 10th. I move to approve. We have a first. I'll second. And a second, all in favor? Is there any discussion? Motion passes. Abstain. Guess I should ask for discussion before asking you if you're in favor. My bad. Okay, the information section. Um, pretty light this go around. We hired a assistant baseball coach, and then we'll move right into the discovery presentation. All right, how's it going, guys? Wonderful. So I know all of you guys, but for the ones I don't, my name is Jordan Sammons. I'm the uh, athletic director and coach here, but I also teach PE and health. And this year, and health to meet a good um, amount of the standards, we've adopted the Discovery Program, which is a skills-based uh, curriculum. Um, it helps really, I'm just going to read it right here through the program. Students can develop many of the positive social skills necessary to be successful in school and life. Um, it also helps increase academic achievement. So the objectives are to develop a strong sense of community and establish positive support system for all students to teach, practice, and provide feedback on positive social skills and to reinforce the culture of not only the classroom, but the school in general and ensure all students realize what is expected from them and what is expected uh, from our staff. So the cool thing about it is we've implemented this uh, school wide as far as our um, kind of disciplinary plan. So there's a student contract in here where if you get sent to the office for some reason, um, they go in there and they talk about, you know, what they were not doing to either meet the attending skills, either to meet the expectations of the classroom and the teacher. We're doing that school wide to create kind of this combined uh, culture, kind of sense of community. So. Um, we're really kind of focusing on implementing it with the freshmen and sophomores. So in my health class, um, like I said, it, it meets a lot of the health standards for social, emotional health. Um, the units we focused on so far are effective groups and teams, um, anger management, communication skills, assertiveness training, problem solving, conflict resolution. So um, we also meet some of the cross curriculum uh, kind of guidelines and standards. They're currently working on an autobiography. Um, that just kind of details their own life because sometimes to be able to move forward and be successful you kind of have to know where you came from and what helped influences you to kind of be who you are feel the way you are based on past life experiences and things like that um, they really love it just kidding but I make them do a lot of role playing so <laughs> they have to come up with uh, different scenarios and get up in the class but then they realize that they came to do an impromptu role play so no, I'm just joking. We're ready. Yeah, we do a lot of role playing where they will have a conflict or they will have a problem. And we first establish, you know, what the difference of a conflict and a problem is. You know, is it an interpersonal uh, disagreement with somebody or is it a, a problem? Is something that needs attention right away? Like I locked my keys in my house or is it a conflict with somebody else? So um, we establish kind of the differences between that. They'll come up with different scenarios, act them out, things like that. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, just community building and getting together. So I'm going to let them tell you guys a little bit about it. They're pretty nervous, but uh, I was able to uh, convince. Uh, so Wyatt is here, um, Caitlin, Safa, and then Victoria. So they, uh, those three came over right after basketball practice and Wyatt came back after school. So we really appreciate them being here. So um, if you guys just want to share a couple things you really like about the discovery program, and let's just start with maybe something you like about it and something that you think has made you a better student or gave you the skills or help you learn the skills to help you be successful in high school. Okay. 
So for me at home and in school, I get into a lot of conflicts and arguments, which end up either we just agree to disagree or we never end up with a solution to the problem or argument, which then in turn just creates bigger conflicts in the future. So what I try to do using the system is try to actually conversate and problem solve with them and like talk to them at a later time and date and actually get it all set up and properly uh, I can't properly solved sure and so uh, we just talk about it and then if it ends up being in an argument we repeat that first step and just try and uh, brainstorm ideas to solve the conflict. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Um, my favorite thing was probably the problem solving on uh, resolutions. It's just because I make lots of silly mistakes and sometimes I need ways to solve them and uh, that helped a lot. And then I like the attending skills that helped me be a better like student to know like how to pay attention, the correct body language, eye contact and all that. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> uh, like you said, like you said, my name is Saka. Didn't know what question you asked us. I probably should have wrote a script for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... So Saka is the person that answers the, the question on the <laughs> test with the five lines she can do, and then she's like, "Can I write on an extra piece?" Of paper? And I'm like, yeah. "Saka, you've answered it." And then she turns in like, "I'm like, I have to write this." Now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we're making these questions. So. Sure, we just write too much, and he's like, "Okay, it's good." <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. But so probably <laughs> what. <laughs> Um, probably one of my favorite things is that we get to all work together, and as the role plays are pretty fun sometimes. When he doesn't give us like 10 of them to do, <laughs> but um, it's fun because we all get to work together and we actually all learn about the curriculum and everything, and he explains it, and we actually get to interact, which helps everybody remember it more. And even like some people, they have like small little problems, but they can actually turn into like big issues that they don't know how to solve the problems when they're older. And now that we have them right now, they can learn how to solve it. and be more success, successful in their life later on. And some people have like anger issues, but they don't know it yet or, or little issues like that. But now that if we learn this, everyone will know what to do and it'll help everyone in the future. And my favorite thing was probably either the role plays or we did like this um, grid thing where we all were together and you weren't allowed to speak. And you had to go into a square and then keep guessing. Everyone would help you with point and guess, which brought everybody together to focus. And that if you got it wrong, you go back the way you came. And everybody through the class would do it. And we do little challenges like that all together, which is like, and we try to beat the other class periods. And it's really nice because we all get to work together, even though we don't all um, see each other all the time. Because now that in high school, everyone has separate classes. And I almost see some of my friends I used to be close with in middle school, I don't see them. And this helps everyone get together and work together, even if we're not close. Like, I don't really speak to why that much, but during that time, we'll be able to work together and build a better build relationship with everybody in the classroom. Excellent. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my favorite thing is all the team building exercises. So the role playing and all the things and projects we have to work on, like writing papers and all, yeah. And um, we run into conflicts with that sometimes, but he taught us how to talk through it and front loading helps a lot too. Just like spontaneous things to say that really help and like how to calm yourself down and not to make the argument worse. So like water words, that helps a lot. So yeah, I definitely make way more friends. And yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. You guys have any questions for me? The discovery group. Thank you for coming in. Thank yeah, you. I think it's. I'm proud that we have a program like this. Yeah, it's been really good. Like I said, it covers everything from you know how to how to stop little conflicts from turning into big conflicts, and then also how to resolve those big conflicts in the moment. Because sometimes you get wrapped up wanting to solve it right there, and like why it's saying, sometimes it's just knowing yourself that like, hey, I'd love to talk to you about this right now. But let's take a 10 minute break so we can both brainstorm how we can get through this and then revisit it. And sometimes just little things like that make a huge difference of it. And so just, just I'm super proud of them and the rest of their classes because they've really bought into it and worked hard at it. And it's a and it's a lot of fun. Like I said, it's a lot of 
becoming a community and being together. And so I appreciate them coming. They were really nervous to come talk to a bunch of adults. But you did great. Does it filter down into the middle school? So this is the first year we've implemented it and we're implementing it at the high school. But the plan moving forward is this a, is a kind of a trial run on teaching it. Um, kind of covered the whole curriculum in the first nine to 10 weeks of uh, health class. And then um, we will hopefully kind of start filtrating that down into the middle school. And the idea is as the kids get a little bit uh, introduced to it in the middle school and they come up into the high school, health one is all freshmen. So they will kind of get hit with a big dose of it. And then we, the teachers touch base in their advisory classes and go over a lot of the same skills for everybody. But we kind of dig deeper in, in the health classroom. So, so that is the plan with the board. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank Good you. Job. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh. Okay, let's move okay. into our reports and discussion <laughs> section with uh, starting with enrollment. So you'll notice that we're down a couple of, um, I think, 13 kids from where we started, but you can see they're all pretty much in the grades of eight through 11. Um, I think some of it is that our rigor and our expectations are becoming more um, rigorous within that age group. And it's hard for some kids. Some have just naturally moved out or transient, which we have, but we've had a couple that, quite a few that have pulled out and gone to a, a less restrictive program. Not that I'm naming names. Um, so some of that is what we thought would happen, and, and that's okay. Uh, building, as you know, um, we have a special meeting on Thursday to get the bus barn, kind of the bus garage, new bus garage going. Um, the CTE, we're just waiting for um, some little things to fall into place, and then we're hoping that will start um, going. It's um, unfortunate that uh, the pandemic has caused everything to double and triple in price. Mm -hmm. So um, that is something that we're aware of and we're keeping track of. Um, academics, we're still on the move of math adoption. Um, they'll start to see the curriculums that the state has chosen or um, are now available to us to view. And so we'll end up choosing a few um, to look at and our plan is still the same that we have a team that's going to go to the ESD where they have all the different um, uh, what do you call them authors not authors but well, curriculums yeah I guess curriculum. curriculums but they're the different I guess it is different authors publishers. and then yeah the publishers and then we'll bring back two into the community two um, at the grade levels so that the community can um, look at what we're looking at and get their input and have all staff be able to have the chance that would end up touching the mathematics, especially in the elementary, because that's usually all teachers um, there that will do the math. And then the middle school has their specialty in the same as the high school. But we really wanna make sure that everybody is seeing our curriculum before we adopt it. That way, if there's any concerns or criticisms that we're taking care of that beforehand. Um, I have gone to a few conferences and meetings, and I just want to be able to say that our leadership team is by far above any team that I have seen or witnessed. Um, the way that we are able to intermingle central office and building administration has been a phenomenon. When I talk about it, people are like, what, how, why do you do that? And for me, it's my leadership style is very transparent. I don't like to hide things or keep things secret or, and each of our leaders within buildings and central office are the same way. So like learning budget wise, um, instead of keeping it just in the business office, in the central office, we've spread it throughout. So all the departments are getting more and more educated on how their budget works and what they have and don't have. And so even though they're asking a lot of questions, now they're starting to get the idea of that, which uh, builds capacity for our whole system. If you are a parent in our district or a community member, you know that we have sent out surveys. This is an ODE thing um, for our integrated plans for all of our high school success, our um, 
student investment accounts and things like that they are asking us to do but it's also a good time to know where we are sitting before we have open conversations with our community community of what is um, what we're doing well and what we need to do better for our students and then all of my evaluations for the first round for um, central office and buildings it has been completed so that's all i have Excellent. any questions questions for shauna Okay, great job. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Amanda, you're up. Do you have anything to report to us? No, I don't actually. No highlights this month. Um, your normal expenditures and revenues and cash flow reports are in there. Um, but no, we're kind of wrapping up. We're tying the ends of the audit right now. We are wrapping up ODE funding, like a lot of um, wrapping up. And then life, life gets real busy with ODE reports and budget starting now actually so what was the uh time frame on the audit i can't remember hopefully in the next couple of weeks uh, i've been checking in with them i mean it's it's all finished on my end they're just wrapping up the major financial reporting part of it and so then once they get that back to me i do a type up and hopefully in the next couple of weeks um our goal is to have it done in de by december in december january is kind of a, the end deadline so okay. um yeah it, it went really smoothly as far as as far as Right, so just waiting. That's it. Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Uh, one more thing. Oh. The budget, I was just looking at grand screen. The budget calendar is also in there this, this uh, month. So make sure and put those dates in your calendars. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Courtney, you're up. All right, so new at OC, the Monster Mash, I'm gonna just kind of start from the oldest to newest. Monster Mash was our biggest event to date. Um, we had 497 people pay the $1 fee to get in. And um, Anthony donated his time and his services <laughs> after the last school board meeting to um, DJ for the event. Can you let make sure Kenny knows how much I charge you? Um, I did try to pay him and he refused. So I mean, I Andy, about that. Andy stayed there for two hours in that steaming hot gym with 500 people and DJ for us. And it was, it was really great. Um, we were also able to raise uh, beyond the attendance, we were able to raise the grab bags. Uh, so you can see all of our uh, sponsors down here. Our community is so supportive. We had a really strong group of PTO parents that went out to the community and, you know, asked for money and free stuff, which nobody really likes to do. And so um, we were able to raise almost $1,100 from that Ooh. event. So that's, and they pay for our field day at the end of the year, and they pay for meals for parent-teacher conferences, and they pay for um, celebrating our classified and certified staff during those weeks. And so um, we've got a, a great PTO that's been established this year coming back from, you know, the hiatus. So, and then our Jogathon, our goal was 15,000 and we had over 17,000 pledged. And to date we have almost 16,000 of that already turned in. So it's one thing to pledge, but like you need the money. And I'm not afraid to ask for that money because we need, we need new tech. So um, our community, not just our Monster Mash, but on top of that has been so generous. And, um, and then parent teacher conferences, I expected to have more phone conferences this time around because the sickness has been. That wasn't me. <laughs> the sickness is. <laughs> there was actually Fox News. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So we had we had more phone conferences, Zoom conferences yeah. than in person like we normally do, just because of the sicknesses. Um, and I, I kind of expected that. But uh, teachers were happy to be able to connect with parents um, and talk about their kids. And so overall, um, you know, we're needing more subs, but we're doing good at OC. And our enrollment is not down. Nope. <laughs> not at all. Awesome. Thank you. Becky, are you reading for Melissa as well? Or Yes, I'm okay. going to do some double duty. Right. So as Becky Armistead, principal of Herbert Lights, um, so I am so glad to get to share this in, you know, following Jordan and his students that were here with their discovery program. Culture has been a huge focus at Harbor Lights as well. 
And um, I was told early in my career, it takes three years to be a transformational change agent in a system. And I'm not a very patient girl. For those of you who know me well, I'm like three years. All right. So it's been three months. What's happening? <laughs> Why am I not seeing what I want? Uh, we are now one year and you know 11 weeks into my time at Harbor Lights. And uh, I have worked hard to be patient, but we are really starting to see that change. Uh, we see that change in the staff. We see that change in the students. And it is absolutely a group effort. It is the effort of our teachers coming together, being willing to give feedback so that I can make the changes that we need to make. It's efforts of the students to really lean in and be a part of things. But part of that means having something for them to be a part of. And so one of the ways that we've tried to kind of increase just that student engagement outside of the you know reading, writing, and arithmetic stuff that we have to do is we have lunch groups happening. And so we have a chess club that is now popular enough that we need to have a fifth, sixth group and a seventh, eighth group because we needed enough space and chess stuff to accommodate them all. Wow. So we have two different days where Mr. Godsiff spends his lunch in the classroom and kids come in and they bring some food and they play some chess and it's um, as someone who does not play chess, it is joyful to go in. And um, I've had a few offer to teach me, so I'm gonna need to take them up on it. Uh, we also have a group that our school counselor, Lori Rice is leading and it's called the, uh, let's talk about it or not. If you've got something you wanna talk out, great. If you don't, that's fine too. It's just a place, a place where kids can come and be with other kids. And sometimes kids aren't sure where to go and where they fit in. And this gives them a space. Again, we have a space for fifth and sixth grade and a different day for seventh and eighth grade because we also know that the uh, issues facing our fifth and sixth graders that they might wanna talk about may be very different than that of our seventh and eighth grade. So we have that separated uh, perhaps for a slightly different reason than our chess club. And, um, and we've got math counts. So Ms. Krynik as part of our tag outreach, but it's open to any student, not just those eligible for tag. Uh, does a math counts program where students come in Mondays and or Wednesdays. You can come both, you don't have to. And they come in and practice for a problem solving competition. And we have apparently pre-COVID had a very strong showing and we are hopeful to repeat that. So there's a competition that happens after the first of the year and uh, I'll be coming back with hopefully great news about our performance there. Um, and then I look and think, you know, I don't know about you all, but at middle school, math is hard. And math has been hard at Harbor Lights for a bit. And we've got a group of kids that missed some really important foundational math learning. And then they came back into a subject that already felt a little intimidating. Math phobia is a real thing. And now they're missing these building blocks. We have an incredible math teacher in uh, Jennifer Ship. She has joined us this year and is really killing it. I got to spend a period in there uh, learning about dividing decimals, both positive and negative. My brain hurt a little bit when we were done and I know how to do it, but just the energy it takes to engage seventh graders in something that feels really unnecessary to them, the way in which she was able to make connections to real life and when you may actually need to use these skills and keep them on track was great. But she also offers herself up during lunchtime and after school for any kid that needs some one-on-one -on -one support. And kids are taking her up on it by oh, choice, boy. which is a beautiful thing because last year we had a lot of whatever, it doesn't matter. And just <clears throat> kind of the apathy when it came to the pieces that they were missing. And I see them now leaning in saying, okay, I don't get this, but here's someone who can help me. And this could be important. So um, just culture wise, that's really exciting for me. And then you look at our leadership and I won't go through all the things they're doing, but oh my gosh, it's a lot. And um, I didn't tell you in advance because it was kind of a late ad and we had some scheduling shifts, but there was a staff versus student volleyball game and then a staff versus student football game. I did not participate in volleyball, but somehow did end up uh, on the field for football. And uh, our football boys were gentle and I didn't break a hip or anything. And so- um, That's it, a win. It, it, I consider it a win, um, but we're really looking in every way possible just to bring them back, to bring back joy in learning and to get to follow what 
Mr. Sammons is talking about with Discovery, we're not implementing that program. It's a pretty specific program that's laid out. The high school is really running this pilot, but uh, I was able to attend the four-day training over the summer with both Megan Stallard, our Learning Resource Center teacher, and Daisy Pimentel, our Student Support Specialist, so that we really had a good feel about what was going on. And that is something that I'll be in, in communication with both Melissa and Jordan about how and when it will be right to bring that down because it is a system that makes a lot of sense. I'm so proud to see those kids up there that were once mine when they were small and hear them talking about how to you know, manage their big emotions. And that's work that we did at Ocean Crest that continues. It's work that we do. This is just a different framework for that. But the way in which we have a K-12 focus, a K-12 uh, like drive, together is really exciting because I think we are going to continue re to reap the benefit of that as kids continue to move up through our system they're just going to be more and more prepared so I'm grateful for the work that they're doing for the fact that they included us in the training and just excited about what's to come any questions before I morph into Melissa I got one question um how did you or how are you establishing a culture where math and chess are a thing and it's being praised it's on because people. i'm really good at my job well i know <laughs> I do. I, but, it being a nerd school it I, is right right now really and, and and i it we were just having this discussion over the weekend with stan where yeah. being bright and bringing being doing math and playing chess was a thing that was frowned upon mm -hmm. now I know the rain's coming, so we got to scramble for entertainment. But having math and, and chess be a focus is just, it's. I'm awesome. not ready to say middle schoolers think math is cool yet. We're I not quite know. there. We're moving in that direction. But I think it's, I think it's just shamelessly owning the fact that being smart is cool. Having a group of adults that is ready to kind of just embody that in themselves. One of the greatest compliments I received this year was a student had some time and drew a portrait of me. And in this portrait, I was, by the way, very beautiful, but I was wearing a t-shirt that said, I love math. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a student that I know particularly well. It's not a student that I had at elementary school. It's a student that I've had just last year and this year, but somehow I have shared with them my intense love of math and all things numbers and that stuck and i think adults that are just really owning that it's it's actually cool to be smart is incredible i take zero credit for it though i have very cool teachers who are doing that work who are volunteering their time on their breaks to say hey come on in here's a place for you um i have some kids who really love to play dungeons and dragons which i didn't realize was a thing again i know it was which is math based right and falls right into discovery right there but there are kids who I, might be I, <laughs> I was gonna say i'm not real familiar with it but they came to me because um they wanted to play but they didn't have a place and they asked me if it was allowed on campus and if they could find an adult to give them a space, would I allow them to oh. play? Yes, you can come play. Yes. <laughs> it's it's kind of sporadic. It's I'm when in. we have room, but I will let them know that we've got an adult that wants hey. to come whoop their backsides at some D and D. Are so, you one of those? No, I have a question. Sorry to bring up. AJ may know more about this than I do, but it's I think like chess is a strong thread in my big family, and there's this thing, and I. It's been too long since I've been in the seventh and eighth grade, so I, I can't really picture it, right? But, Come but on down. This, for, for Mr. Uh, Mr. Godsip, I don't know if they're already doing this or if this would be like, no, no, we are not going there, or yes, this would be great. There's this thing where it's very social and it's very like expanding, is playing chess online with people all over the world. And our family's really into that, not me personally, <laughs> but um, is that something that he would be? interested in or if he already does that they might be saying yeah we've been there done that or no we i do not believe you're doing it now uh my biggest concern with that i'm going to be real honest yeah. as soon as we are connecting with people that we don't know i have seen enough online through oh, social yeah, media channels that have really gone awry 
Um, I'm sure the chess community is a lovely community. However, <laughs> everyone is guilty until proven innocent. There, there, <laughs> there's a moment where that would cause me some concern. And um, as I love and trust my tigers, and they are wonderful children. Yeah, that's good. But I'm also not positive that they couldn't then accidentally fall prey. Shit. Yeah. And I hate to be suspicious like that. But um, I would need to look into it and, and kind of determine the safety no, risk with that. We are. Every adult that came into our room, into our home, was guilty of dual proven innocence, yeah. period. So there might be other right. schools that might yeah. already have well, online. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, yeah. it's a thing. and, uh, and um, I'll talk to him. He may know a lot more yeah. than I do about that. Again, I, I'm not even a novice <laughs> chess player. I'm a, I recognize the board, and I watched the Queen's Gambit. Like, that's about that's it for me with chess knowledge. Uh, uh, but, that's uh, a lot. But... But yeah, I'll certainly bring it up to him and he may have some really creative ways. He was an international teacher at some time. He may have started a program yeah. when he was overseas. Was, we may have some cool connections that could happen there for sure. Perfect. All right. Okay, now you're gonna be Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hello, lovely to see you. So um, this is gonna be really brief because you know, not my building, but um, it is very cool. And I saw this shared on social media, our Facebook page. Um, we're reviving our National Honor Society, and she didn't ask me to point that out, but I think it's awesome. And again, part of that culture of celebrating people being bright and good. And so their four pillars are scholarship, service, leadership, and character. And I'm just really proud to be a part of an organization that's going to highlight those things in our young people. I think we're more than just teaching kids how to read and write. We're teaching them how to be good humans in our society. And uh, so I'm just very proud to be a part of that. And then also, uh, we have a lot of service that happens at our high school, whether it's our community service day that happened earlier in the first quarter. But um, they're collecting canned food as we are. And I don't know if you guys are doing it this year, but to donate to our local food pantries to help our families in need. So um, I thought that was lovely. And the culinary students, um, as someone who has eaten some of their treats and shared them with some of our staff, I'm really grateful that program is still up and running because um, I know it's it's quite an undertaking as someone who has family and consumer science and some cooking happening here. I don't know how they do what they do up there, but it's great. So awesome. Thank you for filling in. And if you have questions, send them to Melissa. <laughs> Jordan. Hey. He hasn't heard enough talking enough already, so <laughs> I'll be quick. Um, so volleyball, football, cross country, finished up for middle and high school. Um, volleyball had a good season, uh, winning record, just fell short of qualifying for the playoffs. Um, football qualified for the playoffs, went and lost a tough one um, at Regis, but, but played really well. And so congrats to them. Um, cross country boys was the district champions. The girls were second place in districts. Um, they fell just short of getting uh, state trophies. I think it's the top four for cross country. The boys ended up fifth and the girls ended up seventh, but still a great year for them to go up there and think compete and do really well. Um, we're now on the winter sports first day for cheer and boys and girls uh, high school basketball was today. Middle school girls basketball started um, last week on 1020. Well, game started last week on 11-8, but 10-24 was the first practice and the middle school boys is after Christmas. So we'll kind of get going on that. Um, we have still a couple open coaching positions. We never uh, filled the third football assistant or the third position for football. The, the um, assistant, Will and Dustin, was our two um, paid coaches this year. And then I volunteered as well as a couple other people. But um, so we still have an open paid position for 2023 that we're going to start trying to recruit because it's really hard with 30 kids, especially if I'm at a game or something being the 80, it's hard with two coaches out there. So. Um, hopefully we can find a right fit for that. Um, still have assistant softball position open for this year and then head girls golf. I had a really good conversation with a lady out from the dunes um, that uh, is really um, kind of high up at Sheep Ranch and she, we had a really good talk. She came by last Wednesday and then we'll do an official interview this Wednesday. And so um, that's our applicant right now. She's pretty excited about it. So hopefully everything goes good with that process. Um, and we'll we can get some girls that. out. Yeah, and, and that's hopefully hopefully the plan too. We did hire assistant baseball coach. Um, and so we're, we're moving along, getting some quality people in for uh, our kids. Um, you know, I want, want to thank Chris and Jeff uh, for everything that they've been doing. I mean, making the home games possible and getting us to the road games. So that's been great work with them and being able to uh, handle all the craziness still that comes with transportation and the many nights getting everything ready for games. So it's been going good. 
Um, just two things that's not on there I just want to touch base on. So I don't know if you saw the article about uh, the pickleball group that comes in and plays in our middle school um, gym. They donated a ton of uh, pickleball equipment to us. And if you're not, I know we, a lot of people know what pickleball is, but it's the fastest rising sport in America. Like it's taking off like Tom Brady, LeBron James, a bunch of really famous athletes and celebrities bought into a league and then they bought into another league and then now they're combining. It's going to be, but it's really taking off. It's becoming very popular. And so um, some of them are in the process right now of getting background checked and fingerprinted so they can actually come in and, and uh, volunteer in the class and help teach a little bit of like the ins and outs of it, which will be really cool for our kids. But um, they donated some great equipment and it's, it's going awesome. So we're super excited. High school too? Yeah, high school. And high school. So we're super excited uh, for that. And then just to put on your radar, Raider, 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 Raider. Sorry. Raider. Uh, December 16th um, is our first home varsity basketball games. Um, we're doing something really cool where we're doing like a district wide uh, field trip. I think I've kind of mentioned this before. We're not always uh, all of our elementary and middle school kids or high school kids get the opportunity to hum come to home games. So we're playing at noon and 1.30. It's the last day before Christmas break. It's going to be Christmas themed dress out every middle and elementary classroom and high school student will come over for a field trip where the gym is going to be about as packed as we can have it and uh they'll get in free the booster club is donating um some candy and bottle of water for each student we're going to have our middle and high school leadership uh team there handing out to those kids uh, have our cheerleaders cheering have our pet band playing it's going to be awesome it's going to be really uh, district-wide community-based and we're we're really looking forward to that day so uh, you know that's december 16th the games are noon and 1 30 so i'm just trying to get it out to you guys if you want to pop in and, and check it out it's going to be a lot of fun that day december 16th yep mm -hmm. yep it's a friday before christmas break so we're uh we're gonna party it's gonna be a lot of fun so awesome fun. thank you very much yeah, thank you guys kenny you're up so first i'd like to apologize to anthony <laughs> <laughs> I think I missed it. Uh, you think you're getting out of it that easy. <laughs> no, I appreciate your apology. Just bring a bottle jack to get me out in front of that yellow bus. <laughs> uh, so secondly, um, I thought my thing was boring, so that's why there's tigers on there. That's also not our logo, that's LSU's. I just, that was the first result I popped up on Google. Um, anyways, uh, home county. <laughs> Uh, if you haven't heard, Will Panagakis and Sam Tiffy are the king and queen. Um, and then I had the space for the spirit chair election result because we were supposed to have it. And then we had like nobody actually vote on the Google form we sent out. Nope. So I don't know what Han's plan is for that yet. All I know is that we're setting the deadline until we have more than like five responses. Um, <clears throat> last weekend, we. We had a bunch of uh, people, their names are on there, uh, go to the OSAC Leadership Conference in Seaside. Um, they learned what other leadership programs in the state do to bolster student engagement and all that stuff and hope to use some of the stuff they did there, like pep assemblies to try and make school funner. Um, they also did Zumba. That's all they wanted to talk about was, was the Zumba. And then they refused to show me what they did. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> Sports-wise, uh, football finished five and three in the regular season this year. <clears throat> uh, made playoffs once again, um, but we lost in the first round, fourteen to two against Regis. Um, volleyball finished eleven and five and barely missed playoffs, uh, placing seventeenth in the state. Um, girls cross country finished seventh in the state. Uh, Danny McLean, um, a senior, finished eighth overall out of all the kids uh, running there with a time of 19 minutes and 44 seconds. Um, and then when boys cross, uh, they finished fifth and Damian Avalos, another senior who just recently signed with uh, Multanoma, uh, finished ninth overall with a time of 60 minutes and 52 seconds. And then soccer with Pacific finished two and 12 and they beat Clyde twice. Um, Formal tournament, we, we have a plan. It's going to be the two-day week of Thanksgiving. Um, I said that first place, they're getting like butterball turkeys and the hams and potatoes. And then we realized that that stuff's expensive and nobody's <laughs> donating it. <laughs> so prices are to be announced. Um, TV dinners. 
I'm hoping we can do, we, we have this plan as kind of a joke. We're going to give the team that finishes last place a single like kernel of corn <laughs> instead of like a single ear. We, we don't know, but uh, the tournament's going to begin uh, the Wednesday, uh, the day before Thanksgiving at noon. Um, we're going to have uh, teams of two, uh, five bucks per team, hopefully have a little fundraiser and have something just kind of fun to do. Um, <coughs> In the leadership, we're planning to do kind of a spirit week thing at the for the last week of December. Um, we're gonna do like dress up days and then this secret plan we have that might involve stockings on locker and putting candy and said stockings. Shh, don't tell Haunted, we'll do that. Um, <laughs> and stuff like that. And um, another plan, um, the Egyptian theater, I don't know if they still do this, but they used to, I think Elf's the movie with the snowball fight in it, mm -hmm. where what the Egyptian would do is everybody would bring socks that are like brand new socks, and then they do like a snowball fight with the socks during the snowball fight scene. And then they pick up all the socks and donate them. Um, we're gonna do that because they, here at Banded Leadership, we have the most creative ideas for what to do. Um, and then our Community 101 grant topic this year is team mental health. Um, once again, um, that's about it. Uh, as uh, we get further along in the school year, we're going to be figuring out who we're going to give the grant money to. I believe it's five grants. And then just like school-wise, um, we're in the middle of what everyone calls no school November. Um, and this week is the only full week of school we have in November. And no, I've been training this week all month, so <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Kenny. Appreciate it. All right, Mr. Trevisall. I got a lot on my plate. You can read my report. Um, if you have questions, just call me. <laughs> There's the CTE building. I just finished the ADA parking pad. I'm still finishing grading the gravel around. Which looks great. Yeah, that was awesome. Does. Um, so we have a, a, a one specific job that will be that soon. The bus goes up soon. Anyway, um, that piece is almost done, and we just got to paint the stripes and make it all legit. It's science ordered, and uh, the roof on sticks, the CTE building. Um, I'm saying we're waiting on a few things. Um, it's in the permitting process through the city, and then it has to go through the county. But in the meantime, I can start doing the legwork for the electrical service and all the other stuff that we're going to put into it. So I'm working on that uh, this week. And so hopefully I can get that planned. Um, not on my report is the Ocean Crest Grass parking lot. Oh, you have it on there. Is it on there? The bottom. Yeah. Oh, it is. Uh, the 23rd, I have the gravel and the machine uh, reserved. So we'll do that on the 23rd. We've had some parking issues because our parking lot is so small. And so um, Mrs. Schmier and Mr. Trevisall have agreed to let us gravel a section of our grassy area. So that's where I've asked my staff to park. The way parents, when they drop kids off in the morning and pick kids up, they have the whole parking lot to do so. We're trying to keep our kids safe and it's kind of a nightmare out there. So yeah. he's trying to get gravel in before the puddles and Before muddy major winter rains. We come. talked about that parking lot when yeah. we were doing the bond. And it's like, I just feel like it's, it, it's just poorly designed. Like yes, there has is. to be a way to, yes. to do better. But just having your, your teachers move yeah. just that much mm -hmm. back has made it so much safer. Um, mm -hmm. We're not dodging. As and that's cars. what we continue to do yeah. is we will adjust and change to keep our kids safe, yeah. whatever it takes. So. And all the cone work that you're putting out? The cones. That oh, is, the cones by the Thank you lane. so much. Yes. That is that was, a cone lady. That was yeah. something <laughs> that Jeff and Chris and I kind of brainstormed last year. We're like, well, just try it. And my aide is real good at shooing people. Oh, she's she amazing. Is. <laughs> yeah, 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 she is. She's yeah. working out great. Yeah. yeah. Not as much fun when it's pouring down rain. Um, yeah, well, well, she wears a rain jacket and has not ever once complained. So. Always has a smile. She's yeah. Amazing. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Appreciate there's, it. Good there's job. a ton. I mean, all you got to do is drive around and you'll see me work on the place. So, yes, yeah, sir. Later. Jeff, did you have anything to report? Uh, I just got a heads up on uh, some information on the new bus. Um, basically, I have Sarah Jones, director of the uh, Western Bus Sales. Uh, she'll be coming down here Wednesday, uh, probably after 
three or four. I'll meet with her. Uh, she'll bring in last minute documentation. Uh, we'll have enough to go to DMV and get license plates. So it is official going to be here on the way. Uh, it's still not here yet. It's looking like three weeks late. So anyway, that's the latest. So I'll meet with her Wednesday. We'll finally head up and uh, see what's happening. And well, this is our handicap accessible bus? Uh -huh. Yeah. This is one with sure. our handicap yeah. lift, a uh, wheelchair. Yep. Lift tool. It's been a long time coming. Actually, it's not been that bad. I mean, the average buying a bus right now is 425 days. That's yeah. insane. The average what? Buying a new bus, 425 days. Yeah. How many buses do we have? Right now, I have eight or nine. Eight? Depending on the new one, if you can. We need, we need a, <laughs> another big bus that we'll get next year. Yeah, That's we're going to work. Sure. We're going to start. Also, I'll start working on with her uh, what we need for a large bus uh -huh. uh, options and everything. On why she's ordered now. Because yeah. <laughs> it's so long. It, we don't have to pay for it till it gets here. Mm -hmm. So I need to get the order in and start it up. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank getting you. on that. That's, yeah, that's been kind of a surprising uh, way to learn how to buy a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy a bus. Okay, 400 days from now, you can get this. Supply one. chain problem. Thank you very much. And thank you for all of you. You guys are doing an awesome job. We really appreciate all of your hard work and your focus on kids. And if you would like, you're excused. All right. We're going to move into our action items. You, you're welcome to stay if you Thank want. you. Yeah. Almost there, Mr. Chandler. <laughs> okay. Uh, first action item is our bills. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to pay the bills in our hundred seventy thousand five hundred three dollars. Second. And any discussion on the bills? I abstain. Okay, for the vote, Stan is abstaining. Everyone else in favor? We discuss. Oh, there's no discussion. Okay, motion passes. We'll get there, buddy. We'll yep, I know. <laughs> I'm just all out of sorts. Thinking about this next item here, uh, voting on the SBA, OSBA Regional Board candidate, Jacqueline Cook. Crook. 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 It says Cook in my packet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. um, so I trust all of you were able to read um, the application, the resume that we received and the um, OSBA candidate questionnaire. Did we have any? She's very young. There, we met her at the Coos Bay um, mm -hmm. OSBA event. At the ESD. Yes. ESD event. And then I, we saw her again at the... Uh, yeah. yeah. So do I have a motion for this? I move to approve. OSB original board candidate Jackie Crook for our nomination. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second. <laughs> All right. Any discussion on this? Does say her hobbies are that I, I did have a problem with the 49ers thing being on the resume. <laughs> but, uh, I'm gonna leave my I leave my politics at the door when I when I come to these meetings. So I have to leave my sports team at the door too. Me too. <laughs> I didn't see the. Oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Okay, that passes. All right. Uh, this next thing is the proposal for rezoning of our school lands south of 11th Street with a proposed joint venture with the city of Bandon to develop public employee workforce housing. Um, we have Mr. Chandler, our abandoned city manager here. And I want to thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you for sitting through the first two thirds of our meeting. It's very kind of you. Um, so um, you all saw the MOU. He presented the yep. memorandum of understanding. What was it? Uh, August. August. So we've had some time to review this and, and do some due diligence. And now I'm asking if, if there's a motion. I would like to uh, move that we uh, uh, approve this. Okay. Thank you, Stan. Do we have a second? I'll second, Stan. Thank you, Ryan. Any discussion on this? 
everybody understands what we're what we're doing. Okay. Well then let's vote. All in favor? Okay, passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Workforce housing. Let's go. Thank you. Uh, thank and you, Dan, I have something members. that you and I can sign here. In yeah, fact, if you want to do it now. That's the studio. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just sign it. What better way to say we're, we want to work with the city than working with the city? <laughs> I hope you're sticking around for four to six more years. <laughs> Left handed he is. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Look forward to working yeah, with you. you. Betcha. Oh, is this yours? I stole it off. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Sixth grade outdoor school field trip request. And here Jones. earlier this time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this year we have a different choice. We are going to Camp Baker near Florence. Um, we're hoping to go the week before spring break, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, March 22nd through the 24th. The camp provides cabins, uh, meals, hopefully hot this time. Snacks, ish. which hot ish. Well, we were eating outside last time and it was raining at the time. It was not fun for them. And so they do have a facility where we will be eating indoors. It'll be great. Um, they will provide instructional materials and supplies. So the expenses should be a lot less this year. Um, indoor eating facility. That was the main thing because the kids were very sad about that. Um, the activities will include campfires, eco regions, natural resources, habitats, wildlife. And all of their lessons are following the NGSS and Oregon Environmental Literacy Plan. So they're following everything that the school has to follow. Um, and it's a lot closer to home than last time. Yeah. So that'll be nice. Uh, but we are trying to be a little bit more organized than last year. We are a little bit more aware of the things. Um, so we're just looking for your approval so we can get planning and get uh, volunteers to who runs that Excellent. camp? Uh, I can't remember. It starts with an S. Straub, Straub, Straub. I think it is. Straub. Yeah, Straub. Yep, yeah. Straub. That's the name. Are, are there canoes involved? There were in the camp we went to last year. I'm not entirely really sure about this one, but I know it's on like this peninsula where there's three, I guess. Three sides covered with water, so they're hopefully will be. The kids okay. love it. Broke a new. Okay. Camp Baker is a Boy Scout camp. Yes. Yeah. But it's going to be our sixth grade educational. Center. But but it's built like so. That oh, like see, the, so they will have. They yeah, have it's all built. It'll be fun. Yeah. I know there will be a lot of campfires and a lot of different integrating outdoor activities. Yeah. And when it I, be, I hear it's a really beautiful facility itself. Yes. Uh, with that tradition of Boy Scouts, they have uh, had some funding to put behind it to keep things up. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the challenges, I don't know if you remember some of the challenges from last year, but it was, um, you know, selecting a place and then we were double booked and then we were told, sorry, we're double booked. So you can either all smush together and we can try to figure it out or you can find <laughs> another place. And so it was a nightmare last year. We're jumping on it and we we're are. hoping for, you know, an elevated experience if any of the school board would like to serve as chaperones yes <clears throat> i think i've well, already been i was <laughs> <laughs> going whether yeah. you want to or not I'm i sorry. believe i've already been what was yeah. the i was, what was there the on that again? it is march 22nd I remember, <laughs> ago. I remember march 22nd through the 24th it's the week right before spring break so yeah. what would happen is we would go to school monday and tuesday and remind the kids hey we're leaving on wednesday have your stuff prepared tell your parents like this is what we're doing and then we will return to school on friday the 24th and then they will have a nice long week to yeah i was saying going back on friday was not yeah good. no i mean it was nice because we could watch movies all day and just relax but if i can but if i can make it all on. all volunteer as well yes. Yes. It's, yes it's it's guaranteed to be more uh, a lot smoother than last year it is <laughs> it is we have a lot more planning on our side we're a little bit more experienced having one outdoor school under our belt now we kind of know what to expect what we need to plan for how to go about it worst case scenario vast worst, one year of experience worst case scenario was <laughs> yeah. last year we experienced exactly. it we're just moving forward it's going to be great i already spoke with awesome. Ms. foster as well about helping out with transportation oh, of the um of their 
luggage yes. and stuff. Yes. So we're yes. going to take the enclosed cargo trailer for all the kids' luggage. I think that everything. is going to be less you the best to be now. Will we get the four wheel drive bus? <laughs> this place is Adam? supposed to be a lot better, not as muddy. They have a lot. Of, it's not changing hands. This place has been in the same hands for a while, so they know what's going on. It's closer. Uh, can I? I'd like Any to. Questions? I think we're. Yeah, out I have a motion. I'd like to motion to approve uh, outdoors. I will second. Anthony. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Yay. I Thank you. You're going to be Thank so you. excited. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. You Thank did. you. It's all for that. Our time. wrestling co-op with Coquille School District. Yes. Yep. And uh, I just checked in with the um, parent. We have one kid for sure that wants to do it. Uh, Pat and Clark went to practice today. His mom said he loved it. Mm -hmm. So it's super exciting. Um, so he, uh, yeah. And then we're getting ahead of the game for baseball, softball. So hopefully we can get some Pacific kids from baseball, softball when they come over here. I think they should all three be on there. I think we have that coming next. Yep. So is that like right. a three A or two A for the co-op of Coquille? So they're three A now. So yeah. so, um, then, so we'll wrestle at three A. Okay. But that won't really affect us because it's not so much our program and we're, our numbers together is not big enough to bump them up to four A. Four A. So just any of our kids that want to wrestle um, with Coquille or, or want to wrestle at all will have that opportunity. So Excellent. which which is exciting. Like I said I know we have one that and and you know normally if he goes and has a good time there might be a couple more that are like okay yeah i might join too but getting this in, in place so the kids that want to have that opportunity so now we got can yeah, i have we'll a motion motion. motion i'll make a motion we have a first would you both at the same or oh, separate yeah. separate, yeah. separate, oh, separate schools, schools. Okay. second second from ryan any further discussion all in favor that passes unanimously we're such a unanimous group all the time <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then next up is uh, baseball and softball co-op with Pacific High School. And that'll keep us at 2A, just like it was for football. So uh, just like how football went, they could come over here. Um, the same, um, I know that for sure the same kid that played football wants to play baseball. And I think there's a couple others. I, I imagine we'll probably have two or three for sure that will want to play baseball. And then um, softball, we're not sure, but we want to go ahead and get it approved. So we, they have that opportunity if they would like to. Also, yeah. Can we convince the announcers to realize that we're banned in, in one Pacific yes. rather than just banned in Pacific? It reminds me of the seafood for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a motion. We have a first, second. second. It's a pirate tiger song. Greg? I, I heard Greg on that one. He pulled the trigger. Give it to him. Further discussion. <laughs> Okay, all in favor? <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, 5.07 to 5.13. First reading of our policies, revised policies, policy BBBA through GDA. I move to approve the first reading of 5.07 through 5.13. I have a second. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion on these? It was riveting reading <laughs> once again. And I thank everyone who trudged through and was correcting and filling in and all that. Rachel, can we do this sweepingly like as such? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we have a first and a second. All in favor? Absolutely. Okay. That passes. And then our second reading for revised policy sections IAB A through IGDG. Man, that's a <laughs> tough one to get through sometimes. I move to approve the second reading of revised policy sections IAB A through IGDG. I'll second. Any discussion on those? Once again, thank you for trudging through <laughs> all of this. It's, it's a amazing. lot. <laughs> The, our admin team, I have to give them props. They're are amazing. Rock stars. Okay, all in favor? That passes unanimously as well. Do we have any public input for items not on the agenda? There's no oh, public. Okay. So I will make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I, I second that.